Hey everyone, this is Angela Andrew, and today I'd like to show you how I edit my HDR photos. I walked through the installation of how to merge an HDR in Luminar Neo in my previous video, and in this video we're going to focus on editing that image. So first, I want to crop this image. There's a lot of open space here in the sky and a little bit here in the foreground that doesn't add to the composition, so I'm going to click on the Crop AI tool and I'm gonna choose a different aspect ratio. I think 16 by nine will work really well for this image. You can see that it's removing a little bit of the excess space at the top and the bottom. I'll click apply, and that already looks a bit better. It's focused more in on the subject and gives us a better sense of place. From there, I'm going to go into the develop tool and scroll down to optics. I wanna check auto defringe because that's gonna remove any chromatic aberrations that are in the image. Anytime you're dealing with a high contrast image with a lot of lights and darks, sometimes those high contrast transition areas can have chromatic aberrations, and this auto defringe does a great job of removing those. From there, I want to go up to my exposure, pull that down a little bit because it did get a bit bright, and add some smart contrast. Anytime you make an HDR image, it flattens out the image somewhat because you're merging together all of those bright and dark areas, and so you lose some contrast. We want to bring a bit of that back, and Smart Contrast does a great job of that. So I think right about there looks good. Next, I want to go ahead and close up Develop. Next, I want to open up Structure and add some of that detail. HDR is awesome because it brings out a lot of natural detail, and the subject matter I like to use this technique with is often old, rusty things that have wonderful texture. And I want to accentuate that texture a little bit further with Structure AI. So I'm going to pull that amount up fairly strong and maybe even add a little bit of boost, which targets that fine texture. And you'll notice that we've added a lot of really good detail to this image. The thing I don't like about what happened is it's affecting every pixel in the image, not just the trucks and the building. But we can fix that. I'm going to go to the Masking tool and choose Mask AI. It's going to scan the image, pick out the different elements so I can choose what needs to be affected. I'll click on Transport, and you'll see that it did a really good job of selecting the two trucks here on the left, a bit of the building, but didn't quite get this third truck very well. So we'll fix that. I'll click the Back button next to Mask AI, open up the Mask Actions, and choose Show. That's going to bring the mask back up so I can see it. Then I'll click the brush, choose paint, and paint in the rest of the area that I want to have affected with this additional structure and detail. So we'll just do a quick brush over. It doesn't have to be perfect. It has a nice feathered edge to this brush. So perfection is not really as necessary. We're just wanting to make sure we get all of those important details covered. All right, that looks good. We can click the back button on the brush, go down to mask actions, turn off show, and because I might want to use this mask again, I'm going to actually copy it before I move on to my next tool. So there we have it. We can take a look here at the before and the after, and you'll see that it added some really nice detail just to this area. Next, we're going to go up to develop and work a bit with the tones, and we'll put that mask that we copied to use to target different areas of the image. First of all, let's go into our masking, choose Mask Actions, and Paste. For this, I'm going to go back to my adjustments, and now because I've applied that mask, anything I do will only affect these trucks here in the foreground. I want to add a bit more contrast, pull down on the highlights, bring up the shadows a bit more. That's looking pretty good. I also want to go down to my color and add just a little bit of extra vibrance just to those trucks. That's looking great. Now I'm going to close it and open up another instance of develop. This time we're going to go back to masking, mask actions, paste, and now we're going to invert the mask. So it's going to affect everything outside of our selection that we made instead of affecting the trucks. So I'm going to go over to adjustments and I'm going to pull down on the exposure, and that's going to darken everything except for those trucks. Now, you don't want to go too far. It'll start to look a bit unnatural, but you can see that's made a big difference, and it really draws our eye into the subject matter in the image and just tones everything else down a little bit more. I think that's looking great. Let's take a look at our overall before 
and after. I really like where this is going. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close up develop and scroll down to my creative tools and let's add some drama with the dramatic tool. Dramatic has a way of intensifying some of the detail, does a little bit of desaturation, and just does a great job with HDR photos. So we're gonna grab that amount slider and drag that up to the right. There we go, that's looking really cool. I really like what's happening there. You can adjust the contrast, the brightness and the saturation. I think this is a little bit bright. I'll back off the brightness. And I'm going to back off the saturation a little bit more. Uh, maybe right about there. And I think that looks pretty awesome. Let's take a look here quickly at our before and after. Very nice. Now for my final touch, I'm going to go back up to my vignette tool and slightly darken the edges of this image. I'll take my amount slider and go all the way down to negative 100. Don't freak out, it's not gonna stay there. I'll go to my advanced settings, bring the feather up so that's nice and high. I want a nice smooth transition between the light and dark areas. I'm gonna leave inner light alone because our trucks are really well lit. They don't need any additional light. And then I go back to my amount slider and back that off and I just move it around until it looks natural and the point that I want it. So right about there, I think looks good. We can take a look at our overall before and after. And that, my friends, is how I edit an HDR image. Each photo is a little bit different and the tools I use will alter slightly, but typically I always use structure, develop, dramatic is a great one, and almost every image I do gets a subtle, big, soft vignette. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a little something about how to process HDR imagery in Luminar Neo. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I will do my best to get those answered for you. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. My name is Angela Andrew, and I will see you next time.